Lesson 1.3, How Clean Is Your Food? The goals of this lesson are to demonstrate how outbreaks of foodborne illness, illness can occur and to teach basic food safety procedures. At the end of this lesson, students should be able to identify sources of contamination and describe methods of safe food preparation. We'll achieve these goals by having a jigsaw and teach back of foodborne illnesses. To prepare for this lesson, you will need to review the key scientific concepts that will be presented throughout the lesson. They include the common foodborne illnesses, what causes them, and how it can be prevented. You can review the scientific content in the background reading provided for you in the teacher primer, the teacher manual, and the student workbook. The teacher primer provides in-depth knowledge about the scientific content presented in this lesson. The teacher manual or lesson plan provides a minute-by-minute -minute explanation of the lesson structure, including instructions on how to manage the discussion and activity. The student workbook provides additional explanation for the students. You will need to print the food contamination worksheets for students. There are four case studies in the worksheet file. You may want each group of students to do all four case studies or just one case study per group. Adjust the number of these worksheets to print accordingly. You will also need to print a homework worksheet for each student. If you would like your students to get practice reading more advanced materials, you may opt to use the advanced readings instead. Print one reading per group of students and print the advanced food contamination worksheet. The key points of the lessons due now are that food contamination can occur at any step of the food production process and that outbreaks of foodborne illness may be more common than you think. We get there by having a short discussion with the students. In the do now, you will ask your students to recall the steps of food production and the possible points of cont contamination. This is a good time to ask students if they have heard about food recalls in the news. What was recalled? Do they remember the pathogen that caused the recall? The key point of this lesson's activity is that contaminated food causes common and serious outbreaks of disease. We get there by using a jigsaw where students learn about real foodborne illnesses and outbreaks. Students will break into four groups, each group reading and answering questions about one foodborne illness. The readings include listeriosis and cantaloupe, salmonella and turkey, salmonella and teritidis and alfalfa sprouts, and mercury poisoning in fish. Note, this reading doesn't fit the template that the other cases follow. Students should point out the differences and similarities between a pathogen-based illness and a mercury poisoning. To help students focus on the most important details of the jigsaw, give each student an activity worksheet that has them take notes on those key points, which are, how might this contamination have happened? Why and how did this lead to an illness? What was the response? And how could we prevent future contamination and illness? Caution! You will want to review the jigsaw readings to make sure they are at an appropriate level for your class. There are more advanced versions of the readings on our website. You can review all this information in the jigsaw worksheet answer key. It has everything organized just as your students will be organizing it. Additionally, the teacher primer and the teacher manual go over the key scientific concepts. After the students have completed their jigsaw reading and taken notes on the worksheet, you'll organize a teach back in which students will teach each other about food outbreaks and contaminants. The key point of this lesson's wrap-up is to highlight how foodborne illness can be prevented. We get there by having a Socratic discussion. We'll ask students to brainstorm ways consumers can prevent these outbreaks. Again, get students to think microbe versus non-microbe. Storage and cooking methods can reduce illness from microbes, but only limited exposure or washing the surface of food can prevent non-microbe illness. The key points of this lesson's homework are to get an idea of the relative amounts of nutrients and energy in our own diets and to provide an opportunity for students to research their own diet. We get there by having students use an online program that calculates quantities of macro and micronutrients based on food intake. We use the Super Tracker tool from the USDA. You and your students may be familiar with other smartphone apps that do the similar thing, like MyFitnessPal. Feel free to use whatever program you are comfortable with. Caution. Setting up an account with the SuperTracker tool isn't always straightforward. Make sure to set up your own account so that you are prepared to answer student questions. If you have time, it may be helpful to walk students through the account setup process in class. In this homework, students will use the SuperTracker tool to log the food that they ate over the previous 24 hours. 
This is called a 24-hour recall, and some nutrition science researchers use it to get an idea of what an average day's diet of an individual looks like. At the end of Unit 1, students will be asked to keep a week-long food journal and use the Super Tracker tool to track their nutrient intake. Be sure to stress that students will be graded based on completion of the assignment, not based on how healthy their diets are. Caution! Some teachers have expressed concern that an activity like this may trigger unhealthy behavior in students with eating disorders. If this is the case in your class, you will want to work with your school's nurse or exclude this homework altogether. Some students struggle with the concept of bacteria, especially if they have not taken a microbiology course or took Biology 1 several years ago. It may be helpful to remind students what bacteria are and what types of environments that bacteria typically thrive in. Students may have the misconception that bacterial infections are easily treatable with antibiotics, but not all bacteria are susceptible to the same antibiotic. Some bacteria are antibiotic resistant, like the Salmonella Heidelberg in case study 2, so antibiotic treatments weren't effective. There is a misconception that organic food is safer and does not have outbreaks of food contamination. Note that any food, organic or not, can have unwanted bacterial growth. At the end of this lesson, students should be able to identify sources of contamination and describe methods of safe food preparation. This lesson aligns well with the content of the infectious disease module. If your students have already seen that module, they are well equipped for this lesson. Don't forget that if you have any questions, concerns, or feedback to let us know. You can contact any of the CTSC team members and we'll be happy to help you.